get to some of the city pairs who'd like to use it. I was talking to uh, uh, the CEO of uh, Malaysian Airlines this morning, and you see this beautiful airplane uh, out there, and he was saying the same thing. I really would like to replace my 777-200s, I've got the complete of them, with your 330. It works beautifully, great seat model cost, lower fuel burn, but I need more range. Well, how do you get more range? You get more range with more payload. Now, that's exactly what we're doing here. I'm going to announce in a few minutes. We're taking this airplane that started out as a 212-ton airplane back when we first brought it to the market. By constantly updating it, we moved it to where you have today 235 tons on it. We're moving that up to 240 tons. 240 tons takeoff weight. 240 tons takeoff weight means about 400 not nautical miles more range. And as you'll see, if they can ever get this thing working with my range circles, that means a lot of city pairs that we could almost do, we can now do. It's like a, almost uh, being saved in the travel. I'm going to try to be almost grounded. Uh, the fact is, ah, okay, so we're ready to go. The one on the right? Excellent. Okay, here's where we are. About 1,200 firm orders not reconfirmable options, almost 900 deliveries in this program, 300 aircraft in the backlog, and we have a takeoff or landing every 25 seconds. Every 25 seconds. As I've just been, uh, you know, warming up uh, the presentation there, several 330 somewhere in the world have uh, either taken off or landing in revenue service with 99% reliability. Well, here's the family. And by the way, uh, if you go back and dig into the database when the old 787 uh, came out, one of the comments they were making is it's designed to replace the A330. Well, we've sold over 750 A330s since the launch of the 787, more than we ever sold before the launch of the 787. So as far as we're concerned, that's a beautiful airplane, the 787, but it is not really a competitor for the A330. And here's the uh, another case for it. They started delivering last year, their first batch of 787s. They're delivering uh, this year as well. But look at the orders keep coming in. Since January of 2011, that's the order book building up 115 different firm orders for the aircraft. And here's a real airline interior, that Swiss International first class cabin. Are you getting an echo in this thing, guys? You might want to back over the sound. Uh, that's a, a real airline configuration, beautiful, clean, modern interior, laid flat beds, uh, private uh, cubicles, and the 330 at 238 ton, that's 330 200, gave us higher payloads, higher revenue, more range, but everyone says the 330 300 stopped at 235 tons. It again moved up, had a little bit higher payload, a little bit more uh, range, but everyone said, can you do just a little bit more? So here's the program, let's use London for example, that started out back in 1994. It entered service uh, when I entered service as commercial director over in uh, Toulouse, uh, summer of 1994. But it was at 212 tons. I've gained weight since then too, by the way. It's now up to 235 tons, and I'm closing in on it, I think, as well, as my wife told me. Anyway, that's 5,500 nautical miles, and that's at 235 tons. Now, here's where we are. At the 330-300, we end up with an airplane that's an ideal replacement for 777-200s and even 340-300s in the marketplace, not to mention older 330s. They have about the same number of seats, sitting there right at about 300 seats. Look at the takeoff weight, though. We're a lot lower in takeoff weight, rather than rather maximum weight. But we have a lot of capabilities that that airplane has as well. Fuel per seat, 16% higher than the older technology. Orders, uh, we have 575, they had 428. But now look at the backlog. How many are still in the order book? Uh, 169 for us, they've got 11. I thought I saw Barry here a few minutes ago. American Airlines has five of those. I really doubt American Airlines uh, and I have the right to reject them. We're going to take those five as uh, triple seven two hundred DRs. They might take something else from Boeing, but I don't think they'll take those. Anyway, here we are. We think there was three hundred DRs, but not two of you. A three uh, thirty three hundreds displacing the triple seven two hundred DR. Lower cost and greater efficiency is what we're selling. 
That's what the airlines want to buy. That's how you make money. So enhancements beyond 235 tons, what do we want? Well, how can we do it? We have a load alleviation function. We have aerodynamic package, getting about another 1% in aerodynamics. We have a, a package with the engine manufacturers, getting another 1% over there. That gives us 400 nautical miles more range, burning 2% less fuel, and that's about 1,300 tons less CO2 per aircraft per year. Now, for those who want to really get into this, uh, we have a reshaping of slot number one. We have shortened flap fairings in the back. Uh, you can uh, look at all the different uh, fluid dynamic models that we've got here. We also have load alleviation. A lot of people talk about that in this industry. We actually put it in place. It's fan-wise load distribution on the wing. And if we can make this click here, at better go. See, see how we did that? Okay. And what it does is it goes into the gusts and the rest. It can use the ailerons to dump some lift so you don't get the same load and you can actually then carry more weight on the aircraft. So putting all that stuff together, here's what we get. That's the light blue, the original airplane. In medium blue, that's where we were at uh, 235 tons. Now at 240 tons, we're in the dark blue. And if you look at that, you can see that we're picking up a lot of very interesting uh, cities. From London, we can go to the west coast of the United States, down into Mexico. From London, we can go over to uh, Seoul, Tokyo, uh, Beijing, get into Hong Kong. Uh, we could also go to Kuala Lumpur, etc. So it's a very interesting airplane as we develop this. And if you look at that, and let's see, the original airplane covered 65% of the network with 777. And I can remember selling our low gross weight airplanes. A lot of people would say, yeah, but that's for regional flying. I really need to have longer range routes. And that's one of the reasons why the 777 sold so well. But now look what we're doing. We're at 94% of the 777 200 network. I like to beat up on them, but the fact is that our own 340 300 had the same range. So here we are, 94% of a 340 300. Uh, network or a 777-200 based network. As you saw in the previous slides, there are an awful lot of 777s out there, an awful lot of 340s out there, and they could be replaced very, very economically by the 240-ton airplane. And here's a, another way of looking at it from Beijing. You know, and say, well, maybe London's an easy place. How about uh, China? Look what we can get all over Europe, right down into Lisbon. We can get to the west coast of the United States. We're in San Francisco there. Uh, we could uh, squeeze it into uh, Los Angeles, uh, Minneapolis. How about that? Beijing to Minneapolis with 330. People wouldn't believe that uh, 15, 16 years ago. But you can get the fuel efficiency. You can get the low operating cost of this aircraft. And now you don't have to sacrifice range and payload to do it. So we've just finished our design studies. We are now formally launching it here this morning at Thornborough. We'll finish our detailed design of the little piece into uh, 2014, and then we'll build it and have it into service uh, about the summer of 2015. And get that a couple months early. I've already had three air two airlines and one leasing company saying, can't you get it at the beginning of 2015? Well, as uh, Stefan said, we're trying to move faster and, uh, and quicker, and maybe we could get it a few months early. But right now, the target is the summer of 2015. And you don't see any customers up here, but I am still working on it, despite what Richard Apollakia says, that all these orders and deals have been done and we're sitting in somebody's drawer. I'm negotiating with a customer, and hopefully before the end of the air show, I'll be able to announce our first customer for this aircraft. And why should a customer now rush out and buy the aircraft? So here's the economics. Here's a 330-300 as our datum. This is cash operating cost. That's fuel burden. That's also maintenance cost. Remember, engine maintenance cost, airplane maintenance cost on the newer aircraft. They're a little more complex, they're a bit more expensive. That's the, where the 777-200ER is. We know it's a big, heavy airplane. But what you may be surprised to see is a 787-8 is only 1% better than a 787-9. Admittedly, 787-8 is a smaller airplane. 787-9, which is the same size, even though I've got a slightly wider seat, is 6% better in cash operating costs. But what about direct operating costs? This is where we put capital in. Some people would say, well, this is all in cost, capital cost, as well as fuel burn, maintenance, total operating cost. We're a less expensive airplane. So you use us as a datum, 
the, even the used 777-200 is 10% higher. The 787-8 is 10% higher. And the 787-9 is 4% higher on direct operating cost per seat. And by the way, we end up uh, with a wider seat. We're at 18 inches at 8 abreast in our 330. They're at 17.2 inches at 9 abreast in their uh, 787. And we're available earlier. If you had to wait four or five years for a 350 or a 787 compared to getting a 330 today, how much more profitable could you be? Well, this is contribution to profit in millions of dollars plotted on this uh, curve, and I'll hand these curves out to you afterwards. There's a 787. As you can see, it's slightly better, so the, uh, the curve is moving up. But look what happens if you introduce the new aircraft several years later. You don't make as much money over time. In fact, the Delta PV, in this case, is 120 million US dollars in favor of bringing in the 330 earlier. And by the way, the same thing would apply to my own 350, but it's much more fun to go here. The fact is getting today's technology, especially if you can move it, improve it, like you've done with the 330, and bring it in earlier, you can make much more money. So that's where we are, uh, introducing A350 technology in the airplane, load alleviation, more payload, more range, more markets, lower emissions, entry into service in the summer of 15. And by the way, as I said before, with the eight abreast cabin, we have an economy, an 18-inch wide seat, whereas you go with that beautiful Qatar airplane, an economy, if it's nine abreast, you'll see 17.2. If you want the same wide seat we've got, you've got to go to eight abreast on a 787. And of course, we'll have the data in IFE, and we think uh, we've got a beautiful product to replace all those 777-200s out there, all those 340-300s out there, and all of the early A330s. And that's an awful lot of aircraft. We cover 94% of that 777 or 340 network. We actually believe we've got one of the most efficient aircraft in the market today. Well, that's the A330 at 240 tons, and now we can open it to any questions.